Are you ready? Stand by. Welcome to the 3 Gun Show, your source for technique, strategy, and match recon, brought to you by Armalite Rifles, LAG Tactical, and Breda Shotguns. I'm your host, Dave Hartman. My guest this week is Dylan Easley, and we discuss coming back from your first DQ. This podcast is brought to you by LAG Tactical. I've been using LAG gear for three years now, and I just got an upgrade into their new for 2018 MCS mag pouches. MCS stands for Modular Carry System and is a two-piece design that fits most double-stack 9 and 40 mags and most AR mags. That means I can loan gear to someone in need on the range, even if we're shooting different guns. I've been using these pouches for many matches now, and they've been great. I like that you can choose the retention based on what is required by the stage, speed demon or locked in tight. I've been shooting the low-cut Supernova holster as well, and it has been a dream. They make it in a mid and high cut too if you're into that, but I'm digging the low cut. Super fast draws and plenty of retention when you need it. Check them out, lagtactical.com and use code 3GS in all caps to save yourself 10% when placing an order. This podcast is brought to you by Breda USA, Italian shotguns that are the best in the world. And this is a shotgun tech tip from Team Breda. Hey, this is Dave Hartman from The Three Gun Show, and I'm with Tina martin Nims from Team Breda, and we are going to learn about choke selection. So before you go out to the match, you want to make sure that you have an understanding of how um, what your chokes are patterned at. So what I like to do is I take, I have my three main chokes that I usually use, which is a spreader, an IC, an improved concylinder, or, and a mod. And I set my targets out at 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, and 30. And it's just like a knockover steel and a flipper. And I test to see what those cho- how they perform at those distances with the ammo that I typically use. And so when I go out onto a stage, I already know that at, say, 35 yards, I can use my mod choke and knock it out. And I'll be all right, ready to go. Awesome. All right. Well, that's your tech tip from Tina martin Nims of Team Breda. Check out Breda's B12i three-gun ready inertia-driven shotgun at BredaUSA.com. That's B-R-E-D-A. Thank you for tuning into the podcast. This week, as I record this little intro here, I just got back from the NRA annual meeting in Dallas, which was an awesome time. And uh, if I saw you there, it was absolute pleasure. Uh, thanks for stopping me. Thanks for the kind words about the podcast. If I didn't see you there or if I didn't make it to your booth, please don't take it uh, personally. We were on kind of a truncated schedule. Um, I do value you as listeners. I always love meeting everyone. So if you ever see me at a match or at a, an event like in our annual meeting or something like that, come by, say, hey, love to talk to you. So after the in our annual meeting, I thought I was going to take a couple days of vacation this week, but uh, but I'm in video making mode right now. For those that saw the recap video I made for the Vortex Shooter Source 3 gun, uh, first of all, thanks for watching it. I got a ton of great feedback from it on <laughs> on on social, um, in person at NRA, all over the range, you know, and it seems like it's uh, it's something interesting. So I'm gonna do one for the Gadsden Shotgun Championship that Dylan and I talk about in this podcast here. And then uh, there's actually going to be a match recon of that that match on Friday, uh, if you listen to this real time. So if you're interested in that, patreon.com slash 3 show. And uh, if you haven't seen the first video, check it out, 3 show.com slash YouTube. That'll take you right to the 3 Gun Show's YouTube page. Uh, make sure you subscribe there so you can see the latest things that we're up to here at the 3 Gun Show. I'm going to be doing a lot more video this year, and I want you to be a part of it. Uh, good content planned, so sit tight and enjoy. Now on to the show. After shooting for six years, you come up with your first DQ in a major match while you're in the middle of the performance of a lifetime. How do you deal with the impact to your mental game and to your future performance? This exact situation just happened to Dylan Easley, and I asked him those very questions when we sat down together after the Gadsden Shotgun Championship in Missouri to do a post-mortem on the event. We also get into planning a comeback from your first DQ and how to reframe the event to ensure future performance, 
Also, along the way, we get into technical breakdown of stages, how to train to be ready for the, the shooting season when the temperature drops, and working your stage plans for your strength. Plus, the ever-present conversation of mental game. So enjoy this one with Dylan Easley. Dylan. What's up? Welcome back to the show, man. Yeah, I think I'm here more than Birdsall now. <laughs> uh, You're definitely here more than Birdsall. I think uh, I think the only person that has you beat is Amax. No, oh, I'm effed up my game. <laughs> yeah, the uh, the the repeat guest thing is kind of interesting because mm-hmm. sometimes it's uh, it's difficult to think of like okay, well we already covered like these specific topics. Like, what are we going to talk about in uh, in this next episode here? But I don't think like you and I ever have that problem. I think you no. and I. We talk so much offline that it's almost yeah. like, oh, I think we might have wasted that. We should have made that a show topic. Yeah, and we, we've had that conversation before where um, the conversation has to turn into like, hey, maybe we should do this. You know, maybe maybe it is worth talking about. Yeah. You know, we went, we've gone through etiquette. We've gone through a bunch of other stuff and hopefully helped a few people out as far as, well, not making themselves that guy on the range. Yeah, for sure. So. Yeah, there's there's been some really good ones, and what you know, like you said, one of the uh, the better ones I think we've done is the uh, the etiquette episode. Mm-hmm. So if folks haven't heard that one yet, I'm going to put a link to that one in the show yeah. notes because it is uh, it's worth revisiting. And if you're new to the game, etiquette is something um, you know. I mean, it sounds simple, right? It's like you know, keeping yeah. your elbows off the table and eating with the right fork kind of thing, but um, it helps to show the people that you're shooting with. You know what you're doing. That you yes. are a uh, a high achiever, you're someone who is on the inside, right? And you get more opportunities that way. Exactly. You show yourself to be someone that they want to shoot with. Yes. You know, if you're the guy who never picks up a target and resets, you're the yep. guy who wants to complain and wants to, you know, argue about everything, mm-hmm. uh, especially when it doesn't matter. It's especially yeah, when sure. it's really annoying. But um, if you're that guy in the squad, nobody wants to be that guy. And sometimes you have to realize what makes you that guy. Mm-hmm. And uh, a lot of people go through the issue of being that guy, and then they hear about it. And, and not like, even knowing it. They're like, oh, so everybody knows that guy, and I don't because yeah, I'm him. Because I am that guy. Yeah, I am it's, that guy. It's like that uh, if you can't find like the uh, the annoying cousin at the family reunion. Yeah, that's you. That's you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah you're, you're the one everyone talks about. Exactly. Oh. Exactly. Well, Dylan, it's it's uh it's great to see you, man. So I've yeah. saw you, I've seen you several times in the past uh past month, I guess. Yeah, we've been a lot of the same matches. Yep. So we're here right now. Uh I forgot what town we're in, but we're in Missouri. We were yep. uh in Liberia? Uh Iberia. Iberia. Yeah. Earlier today. Yep, shooting uh, the Gadsden Shotgun Championship. Gadsden yeah. Shotgun Championship, which is a a pretty interesting match. We're going to mm-hmm. talk about that one in a minute here. But for for folks listening, if you've been to Generation Three Gun, it's kind of in the similar sort of area. Yeah, it's a little farther from Lake of the Ozarks. Yeah, so it's so. about forty minutes southeast of yeah. Lake of the Ozarks, which uh, Generation Three Gun is pretty close to Lake of the Ozarks, mm-hmm. probably about twenty minutes away. Yeah, we stay so. right on the lake in a VRBO, so yeah, yeah, you're you're looking at the lake every day. You go yes. back for dinner, so yeah. Yeah, so that same general area of the uh, of the country, I guess yeah. you would say, uh, a little bit different. So um, our our buddy Chad Francis mm-hmm. bought some land, quite a bit of it, quite a bit of it, and yeah. he put up a uh, a range like uh, like many of us fantasize about while we're uh, sitting in our in our corporate jobs or our cubicle yeah. life. Wouldn't it be great if we owned a range, well, especially one with two six hundred yard ranges and two thousand yard ranges? Right. I mean, it's it's awful hard to uh, to argue with what he's got there. Yeah, it's pretty impressive. And when you when you drive into the place, there's a giant sign that says Gadsden Shooting uh, Shooting Range, mm-hmm. and it has like the the big coiled snake from mm-hmm. the Gadsden flag, which is uh, is pretty cool. So he's built quite the uh, quite the range, quite the yep. uh, little mecca there. So we're going to talk about that one in a minute here. But um, let's uh, let's rewind a little bit. Yeah. So we're here in. April, end of April, it's almost May, and you've already fired forward with six matches for the year. Uh, six majors and uh, yeah, something around six, something like that. Yeah, yeah, quite quite a bit of shooting. Right. So so, so you're a Kansas City guy. Yes. And if I'm not mistaken, you have not had like the perfect practice weather 
that a lot of, know. <laughs> lot of our Texas and Florida friends have, right? Well, we had the perfect practice <clears throat> weather Monday through Thursday when I was at work. Right. And then it will tip a 40-degree 40, 40 drop, and we will have snow or rain. Right. So it's pretty hard to get away from it, and you either have to go practice in it and deal with it, or you're going to stay home and dry fire, or you might be shooting a match in it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've, I've had a chance to shoot my first PRS match, uh, GA Precision put on, right. which I guess would make number seven. Um, and, and I didn't do well. Um I wasn't prepared for it, didn't know what I was getting into. Uh, it was a really good experience. I think it helped me before the Vortex Shooter Source match. Uh, just all that long range, you know, yeah. building a position, stuff like that, making good shots. Um, but we shot in 28 to 30 degree weather with blowing snow. Uh, the only advantage to that is you know exactly where the wind's blowing. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, it's like, oh, this is exactly a half value wind at 13 miles an hour. And then, oh, well, I don't want to leave my Kestrel out because it's going to fill full of snow. <laughs> So, well, yeah, you can see uh, you can see the wind calls, which has got to be yeah. pretty helpful. It's like uh, throwing powder down the uh, down the range the exactly. entire way all the way to the target, but uh, but then you're shivering. Yeah, we were we were dressed really, 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 really warm and still cold. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and of course, anytime you try to do anything, if you had to go prone, you're laying in snow. Right. So you're going to get a little wet, and you're hoping that it doesn't get through because then you're really wet. Yeah, and then you're screwed for the day. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So when you when you look at uh, conditions like that, and those are like your your local area conditions, so what makes you think that you're ready to shoot a match, like a major match for the year? Is that Do you look at those like, hey, maybe this is going to be a warm-up for the next match? Or do you think like all that training I did last year before it started turning shitty – is going to be uh, still in my head. You hope. Um, I've always heard if you if you train for worse conditions than what you're going to be in, mm-hmm. you're going to be a little more prepared. So if I'm out and I'm shivering and still having to make the drills count and still making things count in practice, mm-hmm. uh, it sucks. I don't like it. Uh, luckily, I've got heated seats in the car. I mean, I don't drive anything special, but it's got heated seats. Mm-hmm. So when I get inside, I can warm back up, All get right. back out and shoot. I know, you know, Josh Fralick up in Minnesota was doing the same thing, and he's got two or three feet of snow, and I don't think anybody's going to deny the fact that he's shooting lights out right now. Right. So. Well, you know, one thing I've noticed is that there – so, so uh, a few years ago, my shooting buddy Bill that I always mm-hmm. talk about on the podcast, he and I did this, like, uh, winter league, which ended up – most of the time just being him and I. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, it, it became like a, uh, a three-gun practice sort of thing. But I, I did find that there was a limit to the temperature where I could shoot and learn things. There was a, a coldness where it's like, all right, I'm not even learning anything. Yeah, like, at, that, at that point you're just trying to survive the practice session to go home. Yeah. What yeah. we did was we, we would park the truck near the firing mm-hmm. line and the uh, – uh, in between rounds, we would sit in the truck and warm up, mm-hmm. and we would step outside and make ready. And by the time you made ready, like your hands were so cold, you couldn't even feel the trigger. Yeah, see, like luckily, Kansas City doesn't quite get that cold. Oh, okay. Uh, it, it, it'll get mid-20s, and, and we'll we'll eke down every now and then to, you know, teens and even sometimes single-digit weather. Yeah. But it, so it's this, this a little more I think rare. It's like negative 20. Yeah, see, we, we never touch that. Um, we'll, if it's wind chill, <laughs> it, yeah. it, it changes everything. Well, yeah. Uh, but cause you're like super humid too. So yeah, so we're humid wind, here. A little bit really of wind cold. and it really gets cold and yeah. all of a sudden it doesn't matter how warm it is. It, it just kills you. So now we, we've been less than lucky this year. So this year kind of started off a little rough, um, mm-hmm. and kind of has been a roller coaster ride on kind of a, uh, personal level and on a, on a shooting level. You know, obviously those kind of interact together. Mm-hmm. Um, started out in February, shot the Lucas Oil shotgun match down there, which those guys in did Houston. a great job in Houston. So I did fly down. Um, and that that was a wet and muddy. It was wet and match, muddy, right? but at the same time, it was still a hell of a lot better than what it was in Kansas City. Oh, really? Yeah, just driving down, it's like, oh, it's 50, it's cold. It's And these people are wearing jackets and everything. And meanwhile, I'm, yeah, I'm like, uh, you know, I've got a short sleeve T-shirt on. Right. I'm like, man, I don't understand what these people are so cold for. Like, well, this is cold for them. Yeah, our Minnesota uh, boys are doing the same thing, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they show up in, you know, T-shirt and shorts, and we're wearing a parka. <clears throat> you know, it's 40 yeah. degrees, and they're going like, oh, it's summer. Yeah. And no, no, guys, not quite. You know. We did that last weekend at the uh, the Vortex Shooter Source match. So several of my uh, my Colorado buddies uh, went down for mm-hmm. that match, and uh, luckily we all got on a squad. And the last day, you know, it's, you know, 
forecast is beautiful. It's going to be nice yep. all day. But it's a little chilly in the morning, right? Yep. As it is anywhere in the morning. So we're walking around shorts and uh, hoodies. Mm-hmm. And I, I hear, well, you can tell the Colorado guys because they're all wearing yeah. shorts. And I turn around and, like, a dude's in, like, a goddamn snowsuit. Yeah. He's like, dude, we're we're in Fort Worth, man. Yeah. It's not, gonna, it's not oh, that cold. Latola was in my squad. And, and Jake Latola was there. And I think he had a pair of, you know, golf shorts on as yeah. we're walking stages. And I'm going, like, man, it's not that warm. Like, I, I got, at least I got pants on and a, you know. I got a long sleeve shirt or a hoodie or something going. Yeah. But like, man, well, Latola that left like three foot of snow. Yeah, to come yeah. down to Fort Worth. So like that is blazing hot for him, right? Yeah, they they were showing um, somebody's door. I, I don't even know if it was his or they just pulled it off the internet, but it was like the snow was packed up and you could see the indentions. Yes, and the shape of the door where they opened the door and like, yeah, by the way, this is up here. Yep. <laughs> Aren't yeah. you glad you're down here? Yeah, and it, it's pretty incredible when you when you look at that and you think of like the changing conditions. Like, do you mm-hmm. think that gives one an advantage for going to like a match like the Lucas Oil match he shot in uh, Houston? Yeah, no, I think it does. Yeah, I, I think um, so. Advantages are going to swing for various reasons in different directions, right? And so for me, if I'm going down there, if I've been practicing in cold, wet rain in Kansas City, and I was going down there, and it's cold, wet rain, and those guys aren't used to getting that, which at that point in Houston they were, right? Um, I was used to cold, 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 and snow, or just flat out cold. Uh, and when anytime you deal with slick conditions, it kind of levels things out. But um, if you've been cooped up in the house, the only thing you can do is dry fire. Well, you're kind of at a disadvantage. Yeah. I mean, if I were if I were able to make a full time gig out of the shooting deal, uh, I'm not going to be in Kansas City. I'm going to have to go someplace warmer where I can shoot all year long. Right. Because I don't want to lose that Austin. step in an off season. I want to take an off season because it's a choice. Right. Not because, like, well, matches are over. Mm-hmm. And, you know, December, January, and even into February, all the club matches in my area canceled, canceled, yep. canceled. One of them was canceled because of temperature. And it's not because of snow, not because of wind, not because of rain, temperature. Mm-hmm. And it's like, well, I can't even go shoot a USPSA match. Right. You know, and that, yeah, that gets and, frustrating. And, you know, that's the way it is in Colorado, too. And it's not necessarily just for temperature. It's also for, like, hunting season, right? Yeah, which we which, get that a little, but not as not as much probably. Yeah, so we get hunting season, and then we get like uh, oh it uh, <clears throat> so most people think because they watch Monday Night Football that like we ride around snow sleds in Colorado and yeah. ski to work and yeah. shit like that, but that's that's a uh, it's an animation. That's not mm-hmm. exactly what Denver looks like. Trust me. So so all of Colorado isn't Aspen and Breckenridge. Exactly, we're not literally oh, man, surrounded I'm, by I'm mountains. I'm so confused. I know it, it it's it's weird. But so we uh, we shoot on the eastern plains, and in uh, <clears throat> in Denver and East, mm-hmm. we get three hundred days of sunshine a year, right? So you have snowfall, which is six inches, eight inches, ten yeah. inches, twenty four inches, whatever it is, and then you have seven days of sun after that, and then more snowfall. Mm-hmm. And in those seven days, that snowfall melts, creates mud. Yeah. And so if you have 50 dudes in trucks on a, a yeah. range around the practical shooting base, you're creating these big ruts. Yep. You're, uh, you're causing, damaging things. Causing yeah. thousands of dollars in damage. Mm-hmm. And, and someone's like, well, you know, can't damage dirt. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You can. You can because yeah. it, it takes an earth mover to fix that stuff, right? So there's there's that aspect of it. So, yeah, we mm-hmm. have an off season in, in uh, Colorado. When I was in Texas, we didn't have an off season. We got to shoot. Yeah. The entire time, it was fantastic. Oh, yeah. I'd, I'd see videos of some of the guys that uh, they are friends of mine down in Austin area. And, you know, it's December 15th. Yeah. yeah, we shot this match. This went good. Oh, great stage. And they're walking around in shorts. <laughs> and, yeah, they're running around in shorts. I'm like, I, I, I kind of hate you. Like, you're, you're my friend and I like you, but I really yeah. don't like you right now. Well, you know, it was the same thing. Uh, I would I would like to drive to uh, Houston when I lived outside of Austin mm-hmm. in uh, Bastrop and shoot the distant arms matches. Mm-hmm. And it was the same thing. It's like. You know, my my buddies back home are, you know, like, oh, I can't shoot. Yeah. Best thing we do is, like, an indoor USPSA match, and those mm-hmm. guys are dicks. So, but, you know, we're shooting out to 450 yards, yeah. like, in a club match. So, yeah. it definitely is uh, is different in that in that. Well, and there's a definite advantage to it. I mean, if you yeah. look at the, the guys that have come out of that area down there, and you look at the guys even in pistol sports coming out of 
southern states Florida. that have had, well, Florida or let's say New Mexico, yep. Arizona, you know, even in parts of California where they were shooting a lot in, yeah, in so Nevada cool. now. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I, I got to uh, to train on my range yesterday with Fred Ruiz out of, uh, oh, yeah. out of Las Vegas. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, it's not every day a guy's flying in to teach a pistol class and then, hey, by the way, what are you doing? Nothing. Do you want to go to the range? And we're, we're going to work on this and work on that. And, uh, you know, you don't get a chance to do that every now and then. So it was, it was a good opportunity for me. But, hey, in Vegas, there's not a whole lot of snow. No. And there's not a whole lot of rain. Yeah. And that makes where there's not Very a whole lot of frequent. downtime. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so they don't have, like, the uh, the off-season type of thing. Well, they they shouldn't. I mean, if, if yeah. you did, it was it was 100% optional. It was on you. Yeah. You know, it, you needed a break and you took it, great, good for you. Yeah. And, but it's and, not because the weather totally shut you out. totally fun to take a break. Oh, no, it is. Yeah, it, I try and take uh, a couple of breaks each year. Um, and and I'll, I'll take How one this year. How do you schedule your breaks? I, I try and take a break around the middle of the year. Huh. Um, and and f- for a couple of things, uh, it seems like all the matches are in the spring and in the fall, and, which is great. Um, July and August, it's a little harder to put matches on. We put the shoot for the gold match that uh, that I'm match director for, I think, in June or July last year. Mm-hmm. It was the hottest day of the year, 104 degrees, Duh. unbearable humidity. Uh, you know, I think I had Costco and, and Sam's Club both donating basically pallets of water. Oh, you're kidding. For, for the shooters, yeah. I mean, it, that that was great. It was like, yeah, you guys are having this many people out there and you guys aren't going to cancel it? It's like, no, it's for charity. I'm like, okay, well, you need water. You need a lot of water. And then, you know, at the end of it, it's like, well, we got like four cases left. I'm like, well, I'm going to be going to matches. I'll take a case. And, you know, and then I think Corinne and uh, Mike Moser, they took a case and someone else takes a case. And like, all right, well, we finally got everything cleaned up. But, man, how much do we go through? Like, oh, uh, like Two 60, 60, 60, 70 cases of water. Oh, jeez. And it's like, so this year we've moved it into May um, and, and it'll be on Memorial Weekend. Mm-hmm. And I think it'll be a little easier for everybody. You can stay and do things in kind of a touristy area if you will afterwards go see a movie go mm-hmm. go entertain yourself entertain your family and then leisurely go home but i mean it was brutal last year yeah so yeah yeah it, it's it's amazing how uh how it kind of spreads out that way and mm-hmm. I, I often think like you know we should push matches north in like the july august uh area well and then uh in june you do have the nordic trigun Right, yeah. but that's not, I mean, and, and in August you do have the Wyoming Governors match now, and 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 both of those uh, I'm, I'm going to attend this year. The, the Nordic Trigun I really like. I've never been to to the Governors Cup, so we're going to see mm-hmm. how that goes. Um, but it'll be interesting at least. Yeah, and it, it's that timeline where we can go north and deal with better weather up there than staying down here and dealing with you know right. 98 degrees in humidity. It's in funny you consider Wyoming north. North for me, yeah. It's 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 west <laughs> and north because it's, it's not like that far into it. Hour and ten minutes, hour and ten minutes where I from where I grew up, but it, yeah, you know, it's, it's still it is north. But for me, it's I, still I a nine hour that. to a thirteen hour drive or something. Like I can't remember yeah. what that was. Nine and a half, I just ten hours. That, maybe. Like the uh, same climate from where I'm at. Yeah, yeah. And compared to Kansas City, it still feels like you're you're heading out into the yeah, great wild west. Super dry, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. So how how does so once you've got your uh, you know, you're practicing in the uh, the cold and stuff like that. How do you decide which matches you're going to do and when early in the season? I don't like, early it, in the it season. Seems, it seems like really? I, I, I've, I'm typically pegging out my uh, schedule the year before. So as, okay. as I go through the year before, I'm going to go through and be like, you know what, uh, I'm not going to go to this match next year. Right. Great match, love the match, but – uh, I want to go do something different, or okay. this is a match that I'm definitely going to go back to, and and mm-hmm. that's October, maybe November, right? And I'm building a schedule out, trying to figure out what the dates are going to be, and some of the dates have moved. You yeah, know, you'll see you'll see the dates move, and kind of like for this match, the dates moved. Uh, you know, the dates move shift a little bit, and it's like, okay, well, is that going to be on top of something? Do I have to pick? Because I've had mm-hmm. to pick matches. Yeah, so I, I've done that twice now, and mm-hmm. there's a uh, there's a lot of weird scheduling issues lately with uh with matches there's choices and, and yeah. you know you you look at the vortex shooter source match last weekend and it's sold out mm-hmm. and you have a match halfway across the country in vegas the uspsa multi-gun nationals the same day and it's sold out mm-hmm. so there's no shortage of people wanting to shoot yeah there, there's everybody wants to shoot everybody wants to uh you know have a chance to 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 go and compete and everything else, and there's plenty of options for it, and there's different styles that they can go to. 
So yeah, so you can pretty much choose your your type of match. Yeah, exactly. Whenever you want to. So do if you it. want a big open terrain natural terrain match like Vortex Shooter Source, right. you can go. If you want to go shoot in a bay and shoot six rounds of shotgun mm-hmm. and a whole bunch of pistol, okay, that's the flavor that they serve there. Mm-hmm. And it's not necessarily anything wrong with that. So so why put these uh, these matches early in the in the year on your schedule? I'm OCD. OCD why? It, it's simple. I, I I don't like the idea of I don't know what August is going to have. No no no. What I'm so. what I'm saying is like uh, February, mm-hmm. like a match in February, a match in March. Normally, I don't do February. Right. Uh, normally, I would have taken it off, but with the world shoot coming in, the, the Lucas Oil matches were going on. And so the world if you, shotgun shoot. The world shotgun shoot. So in order to qualify for cash payouts and stuff like that for the one that's in Missouri, which, you know, that's in my backyard, uh-huh. um, you have to go shoot one. Well, I'm either going to go to Florida or I'm going to go to Texas. And if I got the choice between the two, I'm going to go to Texas every time. So for me, it was like, well, I guess I have to go in February. It's still better than trying to go, what was it, the week before SHOT Show in Florida? Oh, yeah. You know, that that would have been, that, that that's too much, especially when you're going to spend a week at SHOT. Was it the week before or the week after? It, it was close enough to it. it yeah. I couldn't do it. Yeah, I mean, so. January is the wrong time to have a match. It, it's a very difficult time. Yes. Yeah. yeah. After the end of the year, you're trying to line everything out. That's That's a really hard time to do a match. Right. So you decided, okay, so you decided uh, I'm going to go to uh, Texas because you wanted to go to the one in, in Missouri in April. Yeah, yeah. I want to I want to go qualified. I want to compete against all those guys. I want to do as well as I can. If I can place and walk away with a cash prize, that's even better. Uh, but I, I want to compete and see how well I do. Mm-hmm. And so in order to do that and to qualify for that aspect, you got to go shoot one of the other ones, mm-hmm. which, you know, it's kind of a, a series, if you will. Right. Which is kind of what Lucas Oil is known for in other realms is to do a, a racing series. Right. This is a racing series with shotguns. Right. So a great idea. Which is weird to have like a, a series take place in like a, a year series take place in like three months. Yeah, and the the but world shoot push. Of course, that. yeah. Of course, they were trying to cram it in yeah. before the world sh- world shoot in France, right? Now that that opens the door um, with with Lucas Oil and Force Lucas to have the potential of. Um, having a full set of series next year, whether it's three gun, uh, shotgun, PCC. If you can imagine having, let's say, six matches and let's say uh, three or four there on top of the six matches, Mm -hmm. qualify at whatever range it may be. Yeah. And then show up to it, shoot the championship. I'm like, hey, it's it's a great option. be awesome. Well, I mean, it's another element. It's another thing to shoot. Yeah. And that uh, that Lucas facility is so amazing. has, like, so many... The resources. It, it, that's that's what comes to mind is instantly the resources because that range was built in an incredibly short amount of time. Uh, and then right up from the range is a clubhouse. Yeah. And I, I can only guess that it's probably at least a half a million dollar complex. Um, multiple rooms where ROs can stay in the rooms on site. Uh, they're fed. They have drinks available. Everything is there. And uh, it it's a huge advantage because you don't have to go through and try and book you know, 16 hotel rooms, 20 right. hotel rooms, you know, stack, hey, like, hey, by the way, you're going to stay with, you know, Joe Blow that snores yeah. all night because these, that's these who you're stacked with. people are, like, with. all three quarters of a mile from the range, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, they're pretty much, they, they could shoot off the back porch. Yep. We're, we're looking at the back porch going, like, man, I could sight my rifle in here yep. at the bottom <laughs> of the hill, and then I could shoot to six, 700 yards from the back porch on that complex. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it, it, it's very, very impressive, and the ability and willingness of what they've got going is also pretty impressive. Yeah, so. yeah. The uh, the capabilities of that range are ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Like it's it's uh, I, I've it's heard, almost like limit, I've heard some limitless. rumors that uh, so you had shotgun match this year, and uh-huh. you also got the PCC championship. Mm-hmm. Um, that that could expand, double, or even triple next year. And so there's a lot of potential there. You know, I don't know if does that bring three gun in. Does that still go shotgun, PCC, <clears throat> single gun? Do we bring in a UML match? Uh, yeah. You know, do we bring in a, a UML type match that's all pistol? There's a ton of options there. Yeah. When I was there there for the uh, PCC match last year in 2017, we took a tour of the uh, uh, facility. And, I mean, any – I mean, it, and you, p- you pick, like, any range that we shoot at now and – it like pales in comparison to yeah. what the uh, capabilities uh, of the Lucas Oil Range are, uh, or uh, Ranch, excuse me, Ranch. Yeah. But um, you could, you could probably have like two 
major three gun matches happening at the same time there and not even know each other existed. Right? Yeah. Yeah, and that th there's the facility there. We've looked at it, and th there's been conversations that you could hold PRS matches there. Yeah, you, know, you could hold yeah. three gun matches. You could have long range areas, and if if uh, if, yeah, it's, so if it's wanted to be held there, it's a matter of you know, hey, remove these trees, log this area out, build the berms up, do this, and boom, it's done. Mm -hmm. And you know, the 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 guy who owns that and is running it, obviously, is one heck of a commitment to what he's doing. Yeah. And so is. yeah, I mean he he's going through and saying, hey, you know what? Uh, move this area, yeah. put dirt here. Here's the you know I mean even the targets, the poppers had the Lucas Oil logo on them, which is kind of a, yeah, it's yeah, a cool yeah. little addition. Yeah, it was like at uh, the PCC match, like mm -hmm. where you know when you when you start, you're aimed at the Lucas Oil emblem that's on the ground, yeah, like the protect the harvest emblem or something like that. The yeah, well, <laughs> which which kind of that that corrects the um, what is low ready, what is. What 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 is low ready? What is port arms? What is you know? Right. How are we going to argue about this? Is it? Are you starting here? Do you aim at this? It's like no, we put a placard on the ground. That's right. Lucas Oil Outdoor Line, and you're yeah. going to aim at it, and that's that's where your muzzle will be. If you're not on it, we're going to tell you, no, aim at it, and that's where you're going to start. And when you look at like the uh, the weird political climate that we uh, are currently living in, to see like a mainstream company like Lucas Oil mm -hmm. backing the shooting sports. Is pretty huge to it, see the, the level of commitment that they've. Another thing that comes with there. that, though, is does that draw somebody else into it? Yeah. So does that does that draw another company in? It now makes it okay, right? Well, it, it makes so it maybe relatively we can okay. Get a, uh, a monster or so imagine you know, a let, Dunlop or let, let's let's imagine monster wanted to roll in and they wanted to do a shooting aspect. Oh, that's great. You know, okay. Well, what do they want to do? Do they want to do a match? Mm -hmm. Do they want to do a team? Do they want to do a sponsorship? Do they want to? You know, do they want to send free drinks to a match? You know, there's there's tons of options that are there, and it's it, it opens up the door of hey, you know what? This is politically correct. It'll be okay. Right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah it, it it almost is like, uh, hey, this multi million dollar company says it's okay, yeah. so it must be okay. Yeah. It, right? uh, it, it we, don't yeah, yeah. we don't need to be afraid. Yeah. We don't we don't need to be afraid. It's not going to hurt us. It's that lead domino, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah, and that's what it takes for like any big movement to happen. Exactly. So. Yeah. So, pretty pretty exciting to see. Lucas getting into uh, that venue and then supporting mm -hmm. the, uh, you know, the shooters that are going to France yes. in, in their mission and uh, putting stages on the ground that are going to, you know, help them become better shooters and more prepared for that for that yeah. Uh, environment. Yeah, and, and even helped throw a little funding at it, too. Right. So, um, yeah, it, it was kind of shit. Unfortunately, um, that that didn't go too well for me as far as the aspects yeah. go. Um, like I said, it's kind of a, a down, up, down, up, down, up as far as how matches have been. I started out at the the one in Houston, and we were starting to call you the Deuce. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh my God, it was it was brutal. Um, I, I managed to get some unbelievably stupid penalties that just I, I win a stage overall at the match in Texas. As, yeah, and just I mean like beating open, beating Freilich, beating Green, beating all these guys that are just amazing shooters, and then go look and they're like, yeah. Oh, by the way, your foot wasn't in the fault line for four shots. I'm like, well, oh nice. Well, where where is that? Oh, is that that box at the back where it really doesn't matter? And I'm going. Uh, uh, I look over and there's Ruben and there's there's Amax and they're just looking at me and shaking their head like it, th three more inches. You couldn't move your foot three more <laughs> inches. They're like everything else was smoking and I'm like, oh, well, I guess that's not going to go my way. And then when I when I shot the Lucas Oil match in uh, in April, at, you know at the Lucas Oil Ranch, mm -hmm. I've never had it before, but I had four or five light loads. That went through my shotgun. That was boom, 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 poof, and of course it doesn't cycle. Oh, really? And you know you're a little scared because you're racking it out and you're still on the clock, and you're like, man, I really hope everything cleared the end of the barrel, mm -hmm. because if you start cooking around behind that shot wad, well, I'm gonna be hitting Roth up for a new barrel for my shotgun. <laughs> and I didn't want to do that because I know how that's expensive. So uh, unfortunately, there's just constant issues in some stupid mistakes. Uh, I ran through every round of buckshot I had on my body. For like a sixteen round stage, I ran through twenty six rounds and then stared at two poppers. <laughs> and I, I, I had you funny. know, as I, I would normally consider myself one of the top guys with a shotgun, and I'm staring at it and I look down, and I go, I'm dead last on this stage. Mm -hmm. And when you look at Ipsic type scoring, I was point zero one one two hit factor or something like that. Dead last. Oh wow. For the match. Wow. You know, finished eighth in the match and dead last on dead last on the stage. And you're just going like, this is not my day. That's incredible. And so, uh, but but I had ups and downs. So when I rolled into March, 
Um, took second at the Missouri three gun. Everything went fairly well there. Some stupid mistakes. Uh, got on the Texas three gun the next weekend. Took second there. Mm-hmm. And, and things were going pretty good. Um, came home, unfortunately had a, a, a friend that passed away. And dealt with that and uh, rolled into April going like, you know what, things are going good. We'll keep that going. And it just went bad. Uh, PRS match, uh, apparently you're supposed to zero your rifle, by the way. <laughs> and at distance, it really comes into play. Uh, I don't I don't know if you know, if you're off by like a half inch at 100 yards, what that goes to at 1,000. It, it's a lot. It's it, more it, it's than not a close. half an inch? Well, w- when you have a uh, <laughs> PRS shooter going like, did you feel stable? I'm like, yeah. When did you zero your rifle? I'm going February. And they're going... Well, you should check it before the match. I'm like, well, it was February last year, and then she just shook her head and kind of like, what are you? What is wrong with you? <laughs> I'm like, well, it was the first time doing this. And she goes, do you do something else? Well, yeah. And she goes, do you do things like that there? And I'm going, no, <laughs> no, I don't do that there. And and yeah, it just, I, I kind of got schooled and scolded at the same time. Yeah, I learned I learned a lot from it and made some corrections. But uh, then then the issues at the Lucas Oil shotgun match, and then uh, you know. We moved forward from there, went to Vortex Shooter Source, and, man, everything going awesome. Well, it was your birthday. Uh, yeah, well, it was my, like my sixth birthday in four months, <laughs> or fourth birthday in six months, whatever it was, yeah. Apparently, every time I go out to eat, I have a birthday. Uh, Josh, That's right. Josh Tarrant has earned a few things from that. So That's right. If you're listening, <laughs> every time you see Dylan at a restaurant, yeah, it yeah. is his birthday. Yeah, make, yeah, make sure, sure they bring me a sombrero or a chicken hat. Yep, or, and sing the song yeah. to him. Yeah, I get a free dessert every time I go out to eat with you guys. So yeah, so know. we uh, we talked about this on the uh, the Three Gun Show Patreon episode, the match recon of the Vortex Shooter Source is one of the most important things that happened at the match. So if you're a if you're a patron, yeah. you've heard this one. If you haven't, you should sign up and uh, check it out. because yeah. we uh, we told a good story over there. Yeah, it, it it's a good chicken hat and uh, <clears throat> a honey biscuit with a with a candle in it, and of course you know. You got to stand up and do the chicken wing and all kinds of stuff mm-hmm. at the restaurant. Yeah, so it was fantastic. People down at Babe's Chicken have a good sense of humor. Yeah, and, and delicious food. Absolutely. But, uh, you know, it was a happy birthday. Mm-hmm. So unfortunately, the the day before that wasn't too happy. Yeah. Um, so let, let's talk about that, buddy. Yeah. So. Hey everybody, this is Dave Hartman from the Three Gun Show, and I'm with Travis Vogel, the fundraising coordinator of the Jeff Kirkwell Memorial Match, which is happening this year yep. uh, for the fifth time, right? Yes. Fifth annual. Yep. Uh, this is July 14th and 15th, Yep. and it is in Forest Lake, Minnesota at the uh, Forest Lake Sportsman's Club. Yep. Travis, this is an exciting match. I was I was at this match last year. Yeah, it was a good time. It was a great time. We were, we were there running the side stage together. We yeah, had a good awesome. time. Um, we did a live commentary of the shoot-off. Yep. Pretty unique format for a match here. Very different. There's five stages the first day, Yep. and those five stages seed you into a bracket where you shoot off the second day. Travis, what else can we expect from the uh, from the match this year? So there's actually a little change to the second day format. Great. So Sunday's actually going to be a double elimination NCAA style tournament. Okay. So not only if you go to the losers bracket, will you the winner instead of last year where they took uh, second place and in the draw off the prize table, they're actually going to shoot off against the first place shooter again. Oh really? Yeah. So it's w- win and play again for the for the loser bracket guy, or win on the winner's end and be done. And, you won. I like it. But it's going to be awesome. So it puts a little pressure to that guy, guy who went through the end and, uh, you know, gives that guy who struggled through and, and fought yeah. a new uh, a new leg, if you will. This is great. So the uh, uh, the three-gun show is going to be there. We're going to be broadcasting live like we did last year. We're also going to be recording and putting it out on the podcast. There are still spots open, so yes. if people want to yep. uh, join us, uh, they can do so on practice score. Just sh- search yep. for JKM or Jeff Kirkwald Memorial Match. Travis, anything else you want to make sure to um, uh, tell us about here? I want to kind of highlight the fact that it is a memorial match, but it's also a fundraiser for D- Task Force Dagger. Mm-hmm. Um, last year we raised $8,000. Our goal this year has been 15000 and we've had a metric, just massive amount of uh, industry support. Uh, and everybody I've reached out to has been wonderful. Right. Uh, JP has put quite a bit forward. They were our title sponsor before, um, but now we're just doing it as the JKM as it is intended to benefit Task Force Dagger. Uh, with that... Like I said, a lot of people we've reached out to have been overwhelmingly wonderful. Um, we have Radiant on board um, quite, with quite a lot. JP, Vortex is on board. Um, IWI is on board. I'm just trying to go through everybody. Fioki. <laughs> there, there's a ton. I mean, I could continue naming people that we're right. all extremely well Bunch aware of. Bunch of great people that love the shooting sports. Yeah, and the, everyone's extremely interested in helping us raise that money. So um, we may have a sneak uh, 
not a sneak, but a, a really cool feature coming out. JP offered us up some some uncommon goods, if you will. Oh, okay. Um, moving forward for uh, something that might allow us to uh, reach out to the public who's not able to come with. Yeah, because I understand there's uh, like possibly a raffle happening. We're here. hoping. I okay. got to figure out the legal end of it just to see what's what, so that we're not in the black or gray at all. <laughs> um, but we should have a full JP rifle with a uh, PST one to six. Um, and some special stuff that Magpul is uh, hooking us up with as well um, to raffle off. And uh, we have 500 tickets, 20 bucks oh, okay. a piece. So limited run. All the money goes to uh, Task Force Dagger. Task Force Dagger. Everybody's in. So it'll be cool. Great. So uh, for those of you who are unable to make the match, you will be able to uh, participate at home, it sounds like. If you can make it, we're going to be there. We're going to have a great time. Jeff Kirkwall Memorial Match at July 14th to 15th, yeah. Forest Lake, Minnesota. Come, come visit us. And uh, look forward on practice score. We'll put a link below wherever yep. you see this. And if you can't join us, sign up for that raffle. It's going to be a really gnarly setup. So right on. Well, thanks, Travis. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Yeah. So let, let's talk about that, buddy. So there's this thing that's often repeated in the uh, competitive shooting circles of, well, if you haven't DQ'd, it's just well, a matter will. of time. Yeah. Well, I, I, I made it six years. I don't necessarily so. buy that. Uh, I didn't. I might now. Um, so well, when, when I rode, uh, when twice. I rode motorcycles, I, uh, I rode sport bikes and then I got into stunt riding, doing trick riding, doing, uh, doing a few little shows here and there, like, helping some uh, friends out. Like uh, Pee Wee Herman kind of thing? Like uh, in the no, uh, big adventure? no, going and doing, uh, trick shows. So rolling on the front wheel, doing indos, circle wheelies, turning, you know, burnouts, blowing up tires, all kinds of crap like that. Okay. Uh, was in a few DVDs doing a few things with a couple of friends that put DVDs out. And it, was, oh, it was a lot oh, of fun. Oh, for riding. Yeah, for riding motorcycles. Okay. So um, went through that, and when I bought my bike, I had the fullest intention, I'm going to ride it to school. That's all <laughs> I'm going to do. And the guy's like, well, when you lay it down, you know, bring it over here, we'll go ahead and fix it. And so, and I'm like, no, 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 I'm just, I'm not going to do anything stupid on it. I'm just going to ride to school just to commute. And he's like, listen, it doesn't matter what bike you buy, there are there are those who have crashed, and there are those who will. Yeah. And I, I remember him saying that, and uh, and repeated. I went through, and I'm like, you know what? No, nah, screw you, buddy. I'm never going to lay it down. And it took me like six, seven months, and it was it was something small. I, I quite literally stepped off, put my foot on grass instead of concrete, and it, boom, laid right over on the pavement. So um, it, it did happen, and then after that was a lot more crashes. So I'm hoping this isn't the case. So... Uh, but down at uh, the, the the painful part about this one down at the Vortex match, um, I started this, the match out on the long range stage. Uh, I brought everything with me. I brought Fury binos so I could range every target. Mm -hmm. Had it written down. Had my engagement written down a day in advance. You know, spent five six hours walking the stages. Yeah. I knew I knew everything in advance exactly what I was going to do and how I was going to do it. Um, Which stage was stage? Was we started. I started about? on stage five. Okay. So stage five was the. Uh, for folks that shot it, was the red stitch target stage. Yes, and all the long range. Yep, so you shot um, twirly bird red stitch wingy dingies with yeah. the uh, magnets on the back and a bunch of poppers, and then you went prone and shot mm -hmm. up some long range, yeah. And when I shot the long range, I had three, maybe four makeups. Mm -hmm. That's it, to 500-plus yards. So things went really well. Mm -hmm. uh, left the stage, and I'm shooting with... Josh Tarrant and Ruben Alexson and Jake Latoll and a, and a bunch of friends and, and Vortex shooters and some really solid shooters. And I, I'm ahead. I, I'm, I'm actually ahead of them on that stage. I'm like, I'm ecstatic. So we go to the next stage, and uh, it, it's kind of a run through the woods, shooting your shotgun, then run out, shoot a bunch of paper with your rifle, and then yep, shoot up the barricade. That was the, uh, the uh, tank, tank trap stage. Yeah, tank trap. Um, I shot it, and as we leave it, I'm... I'm like I'm really happy with how that went, so I go to the uh, go to the next stage and it's uh, stage seven. You know, shoot your shotgun, run up, shoot off the rooftop, and everything goes great. And at this point, with some really solid shooters in my squad, I'm ahead of all of them on each stage. And I'm mm -hmm. like, man, this is this is going good. I'm like, I'm having a good day. So on uh, we we go to stage eight, the long range stage, and I had a single makeup shot to 560 yards. So as we we left there. We go and we shot the um, the shoot house stage, and everything went really well there. And it's like, man, this this match is going great. And like, I'm like, I can't believe it's going this good. So we go, we shoot the night stuff with Jeremy Moore, and and that was that was a freaking blast. And uh, so um, we, we go through, and it's 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 a blast. You know, we, we had a great time. Did you doing bring that. Uh, any uh, um, 
special gun for that that uh, night stage? Uh, so I did. I brought my PCC because I thought shooting nine mil would be fun. Yeah, and, and it was. It was a blast. Uh, I also well, it was perfect for that. Too, it was perfect, right? yeah, because it's quiet. One, it's cheap. It's quiet. Yes, the targets were not that far away. Exactly, and, and and believe it or not, at night shooting with a light and laser, it almost looks like you're shooting tracers with nine mil. Oh, is that? Right? Oh, yeah, because yeah, it, it, it's, it's zipping along. Yeah. I mean, if you see the video that you Ruben see the copper had, jacket, they're moving pretty slow. Yep, yeah, yeah. they're yeah. moving slow enough. It looks like tracers, and <coughs> it's, and it's a, uh, it, it's awesome. Right. So for and people that weren't there. Uh, explain what the the night stage was. So the the night stage was a charity for We Defy. Right. You pay five bucks, and you got your choice. You take whatever gun you want. If you wanted to go load up an X Rail, and load it with slugs and go shoot it, mm-hmm. have fun. Ooh, that sounds it, like fun it, actually. It, it, it sounds expensive, but fun. Yeah. Um, but you could have shot it that way. Most uh, fun things are expensive. I've learned. Yeah, yeah, they can be. Yeah. Um, I wanted to bring my little SBR at AK and shoot it because it throws like a six foot fireball. Nice. Um, unfortunately, I never had the uh, the gumption or the the cojones to go. Hey, can I shoot bimetal? You know, oh, you know right, some, yeah. some golden tiger, some wolf, something like that. Yeah. So I'm like, yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to do that. I don't know what we're shooting. So I did, I ended up not bringing it. Well, so I shot the PCC and then I ended up getting my competition gun out because I wanted to see the sparks fly. And so sparks flying out of the comp, uh, it was kind of awesome. So it, it was it was a blast. I went through two or three times. Uh, went through with Ruben and and uh, so Adam from Vortex. And so you're riding in them. a UTV. Riding in a UTV at night. Jeremy Moore is Jeremy driving. Moore's driving like a maniac. Uh, yeah, he wasn't driving slow, and there was no <laughs> consideration for like you missed that target. Like no, this is for fun. It is going to be as fast as we can go. Right. So he's pinning this UTV to and the floor. And there's IPSC targets or a- IPSC BC and zones? there's BCs. There's 10 inch, 12 inch. There, there's targets. There's steel everywhere. Right. And so you got you could get up two guys shooting at time front front seat and passenger seat, and uh, radio blaring as loud as he could get it to go had had a full sound system on it. Uh, there was a a place on their Freedom something that they they provided these UTVs for the range staff. Oh really? And I mean they had Vortex logos on them, everything else. The good group of guys that provided and helped with that. And of course that raised a bunch of money for that charity. Yeah. Um, you could even for another five bucks rent a machine gun. So you want to go take an M16 out and go play with it. Hey, we got it. Mm-hmm. So it would have been a cool option. Um, I had enough of my own toys that I really wanted to play with that I didn't take them up on it. So uh, it, it was a it was a blast, and, and we had a lot of fun. We went out to eat that night, went to bed, woke up confident, everything's ready to go, and then so kind of had a uh, kind of have a um, interesting first stage of the day. I'm I'm dead last or, or close to last, and as we go down the hill, uh, Kelly Coates was the RO. And Kelly Coates is a great dude, and, and I had a conversation with him before yeah. and after. Um, I go down the hill. I shoot one of the targets. It kind of wavers. It doesn't fall. Uh, I go through. I shoot the slug. I start to move to the right, and at this match, you're allowed coaching. And with coaching, that's really cool. You know, you, you get to go through and um, you know tell people, like, hey, 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 you got one left on the left. Well, so they yell at me. I got one standing. And at this point, I have no penalties. I have no misses. I have, I have no nothing. I mean, everything's gone perfect. Mm-hmm. And I'm having a great match, and they're, they're yelling at me to come so, back. So I take two or three steps back. Hang on. Let me, let me. So I've heard this story from multiple people, mm-hmm. and they didn't say you were having a great match. They said you were having the best yes. match they've ever seen. Yeah, that, that, that was the best I had seen at that point, or the best I had shot at that point. Yeah. So, um, it, it was it, it was it was going exceptionally well. So I uh, I, I went through and I, I shot came back took a couple steps back I shot that target mm-hmm. and I shot it it didn't fall so I shot it again and it fell and I turned to the right and start to just this, this is stage ten for those guys who shot it turn to the right start to run from the banner I've got probably six or eight shells into the gun and I hear stop and and I look back at Kelly and I'm going I'm like you're kidding for what and he goes 180 and I'm like for what? And and at the time, I didn't think that there was any way that I had broke 180. Mm-hmm. And uh, and anybody who shot natural terrain knows, you know, the 180 kind of moves with you. Um, and there's usually a little give with that. And I look back, and you know, I, I immediately go through, and I'm 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 upset. I've never DQ'd before. Six years shooting three gun, I've never DQ'd. Right. Um, the closest I've had is a like a 30 second penalty for a safety bumping off on a shotgun in a barrel. Mm-hmm. And so it's like, man, you know, that, that would have been DQ years ago, but it's not now. Uh, I go through and I'm like, I, I start to rack the shells out of my gun. I'm upset. And I'm like, okay, I need to stop. Um, I, I know Kelly. 
and he's a good guy. He is. And I don't I don't want to be that guy. So like we talked about etiquette, you know, something bad yeah. happens, don't be that guy. It's not going to change the fact that you DQ'd. It's not going to change the fact that anything happened. And so I'm like, I stop. I kind of stare at the ground. And, and looking back now, I was staring down at my shotgun shells, which I never, I don't even know that I ever picked them up. Uh, I racked them out on the ground. And then it was like, oh, yeah, now I got to unload my pistol. So he comes over, I unload my pistol. And he's like, he goes, we'll call the match director over. We'll we'll talk about it. And, and so I, I go up there and, you know, I'm, I'm upset. I'm not happy. At this point, I'm shooting lights out everything's going everything is going my way Mm -hmm. until that moment and so jeremy comes over and and i i'm a match director too i'm not going to interfere i'm not going to disrespect the process i'm not going to jump in scream yell you know or anything else so i walk the other direction he goes down he talks to kelly says you know basically here's here's where he shot so jeremy comes up he's like he goes what happened and i go well i shot from here shot this target didn't fall move um they yell at me i take a couple steps back so, you know, because I want to make sure I was in a safe direction and everything else. I shot it, didn't fall, shot it again. And I said, and if you look over here on the ground, you can see the ejection pattern, if you will, the, the two rounds that came out of my gun. Because the, the guys who were resetting it left those two there, put a piece of tape over them, like, hey, this is where they landed. That gives you an idea coming out of a right hand of Benilium 2 where it's going to fall. Mm-hmm. So uh, he's like, he's looking at it. And I said, so my only argument, I said, I'm not going to degrade you. I'm not going to degrade the RO or anything else. I'm not going to talk bad about anybody. I said, you know, I'm going to respect whatever the decision is. I said, but I think it's not the best call. And I said, the angle here is, isn't is unsafe. I said, there's nothing here that I'm shooting that's unsafe. And in my opinion, it's not past 180. It's not even close. Mm-hmm. We're talking 150. Yeah. And he's like, well, it is kind of at the curve here. And I'm like, well, if we're looking at the curve, the difference between standing here and being six feet over, how is that safe and unsafe? We didn't change the angle on the target. And so we come back, and, and one of my squad mates is kind of like, he goes, you know, you do realize that the angle that you shot that target at is the exact same angle we shoot the first two targets at in the stage. And I'm going like, you know, you're right. And so I'm like, well, I don't know. We'll, we'll see what happens before I bring that up. Mm-hmm. So Jeremy comes back, and he went to go talk to Kelly. And he, he comes, he's like, man, he goes, I want to talk to you. I want to pull you to the side. I'm like, all right. So I go talk to Jeremy, and Jeremy goes, he goes, hey, he goes, here's the thing which usually is not how his conversation is a good conversation starts, right? <laughs> yeah, right. He, he goes, he goes, here's the thing. He goes, I talked to the, <laughs> talked to the RO. And I'm like, I know who he's talking to. And he goes, you know, we're arguing back and forth as to whether or not, is it a DQ? Is it not? Is it unsafe? Is it not? And he goes, uh, he goes basically before the match, I told him like, Hey, if we have to argue about whether or not it's unsafe, it's obviously not unsafe. Okay. If, right. if we're arguing about whether it's 181 or 179, then this is a really stupid question to ask, mm-hmm. you know. And so Kelly looked at him and said, "Hey, um, we're arguing about this. And didn't you tell us that you should go to the shooter if this is the issue?" And so he came back and told me that Kelly, you know, basically Kelly made the comment about it, and he said, "So you know, go load your shit up, go shoot the stage." And uh, he goes, "But uh, he goes, I want you to know that regardless of the fact that we're friends, that has no, that had no bearing on it." I said, "Well, I said regardless of the fact that we're friends, that's why." I didn't come over and interfere. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to come over and ask for a personal favor. Mm-hmm. And uh, and he goes, he goes, all right, well, go, go go get your stuff. Good luck. I'm like, oh my god, a reprieve. This is this is. If anything could go my way, it's going to be the match of the century. I'm gonna I'm gonna do well. I'm gonna finish well. I'm gonna walk away from this. I'm gonna have a great story about how I almost DQ'd, and then how I got to finish the match. Yeah. So I proceeded to go through, loaded my stuff back up. Um, of course, now I'm into the role, and uh, in in Jake Latola had had crushed that stage. He shot it in 65, 90 or something like that. And so I'm like, all right, you know, I just don't, don't DQ, don't DQ this time. You know, that was close. So I go through and I wanted to push. I get to the end and it's 65, 55. And both me and Kelly are at the end and we're like doubled over. We're having a hard time (laughs) breathing. We're catching our breath. And, and he's like, he goes, man, I didn't think you'd run like that. I'm like, well, I had some reasons to run now. You know, I had a little little bit of adrenaline to burn off, so uh, we're there. I, I pulled Kelly to the side and talked to him, kind of the etiquette aspect, like, hey, I, I want you to know I really appreciate the professionalism, pr- appreciate the way you handle things. I said, you know, I'd rather be stopped for something that could be unsafe and then reshoot mm-hmm. than to have something actually be unsafe yeah. and for you to not stop. So mm-hmm. we, we went through that, and we had that conversation, and, and I walked away from it going like, man, okay, that was close. That was, that, that was close. It could have been out. So we go to the next stage, and it's uh, stage one for you know the people who shot the match. Uh, starting with shotgun, dump it, unsling your rifle, shoot a bunch of paper, 
dump it, pull your pistol, and that's where the long range pistol was. Yep. Uh, I never got to shoot the long range pistol. Hmm. So um, we, we've had a couple of conversations about the type of dump barrel and some issues that may have been caused. I still don't know exactly what happened. Mm-hmm. So uh, I was really bad about it. The only stage that I have on video is stage 10 on my reshoot because Ruben happened to have his phone out. And he's like, oh, I'll videotape it, you know? And then he texted it to me. Um, I didn't give my phone to anybody for the entire match. So I don't really? have any stage videos. Why? Uh, I was, we had a new shooter in the squad, and we were, I, I wanted to try and help him. I was bringing, I brought my spotting scope with me that a lot of the PRS guys talked about being a really good option versus a big spotting scope. So I mm-hmm. wanted to help with that, help try and call hits. And, and I was focused on the match and having fun. You know, and, and the phone got left in the car 90% of the time. I didn't even take it on me. And it's kind of those things. I, I've, I've done it in the past where, like, I'm so focused on having fun and meeting people everything else that's like, oh, man, that was a killer run. I wish I'd had that on video. And you look back, and, you know, and, and in the past when I squatted with Jay Carrillo, I look back, and he's like, no, I got you. I got you. I, I got the video of it. I'm like, all right, cool. I can get that later. Um, but I, I had no video of it. And Ruben was behind me. And the only thing that was explained was the rifle shot out of the barrel right like uh i've i've dumped my rifle the same way since i started uh i'll put my safety on my right hand i will grip the scope with my left and then i watch the muzzle into the barrel and then once the muzzle clears into the barrel the you know the scope starts going in once my hand starts to level out i let go i don't spear my guns or anything like that Mm -hmm. Uh, that's why i've never dq'd before that point with it um I, i don't know if something just fell off or if i felt something brush my arm but it didn't feel right. So I had my pistol up and I'm getting ready to fire shots on the next round and I hear stop and I look back and there's my rifle on the ground. Oh man. And, and at that point you're going, this isn't a, you know, like I'm looking at the barrel going like, if there's not a split in that barrel, mm-hmm. th- there's, there's nothing here to argue. There's no range malfunction for that. Yep. You know, you didn't put your gun in there and I'm like, I don't know what happened. And Ruben's looking at me. He's like, Oh wow. He's like, dude. And I'm like, well, what, what, what am I doing? You know, what do I do now? I'm like, hey, it's, it's over. I'm like, Hey, I'm gonna give myself my two minutes. I'm like I'm upset about it, but I'm not. I'm not want to tear somebody's head off. You know, I'm not mad about mm-hmm. it because at that point I'm going, hey, this isn't something. This isn't a judgment call. This isn't subjective. That somebody says, hey, you broke 180 when you didn't think you did. This is, hey, your gun ended up on the ground. This is over. So I got mm-hmm. nobody to be mad at but myself. Right. And so I uh, I went through and I looked at it, and uh, Will Round was uh, was an R on that stage. And I look back at Will and, and him and I have shared a few beers and had some conversations. We have a, we had a good time. And good guy. Will and Round? Uh, yeah. No, Will Blevins. Blevins, sorry. Yeah. Will Blevins. Yeah, uh, Different part trouble. of the country. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm, I'm going to get in trouble for that one. But uh, <laughs> Will, Will's a good dude. And, and so he's just kind of looking at me and just kind of like jaw open. Like, mm-hmm. what the hell happened? And I'm going like, I don't know. I look at Ruben. He goes, he goes maybe your mag caught. And he goes, he goes, but that, he goes, your rifle looked like it shot out of the barrel. Like it's in, then it shot out. And he goes, muzzle straight at the RO's head. Mm. Oh, does, does wow. a cartwheel in the air and then lands on its side, and I look back and I, I have no explanation. Yeah, and uh, so I I go through. I didn't notice at the time, but I'm walking back, and James Gill and Jay Christensen, uh, two guys that I've shot with quite a bit. Yep, and and really really good guys, uh, people I consider friends. Uh, I walk back and James is like, either that was super fast or you didn't get to shoot something. I'm like, yeah, I didn't get to shoot the pistol. And he goes, what happened? And I go, well, I said. Uh, gun came out of the barrel and he goes well what happened i'm like i don't know i'm like i I didn't see it i don't have video and he's going man he goes let's go look at the barrel i'm like the 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 barrel's not broken or cracked and he's like well let's go look at it so we walk down there and we look at the barrel and there's nothing wrong with it and he's like yeah i didn't think there's anything wrong with it he goes he goes you know you're winning the match right and i'm going well I, i know i was doing good and he goes no he goes you're you're on the pace to go through and and you're going to be fighting Jurassic. If, if one of you makes an error, mm-hmm. one penalty, one slip up, one bad load, that's going to determine who won. Mm-hmm. And he goes, everybody else now is is fighting for that second place spot. He goes, mm-hmm. but the two of you were the only two that were on pace to win it. And I'm going like, I'm looking like, I really didn't need to hear that right <laughs> yeah. now. Thanks, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> so it, it was it was interesting. I went and I put my stuff in my car. And, and at the, I'm not really not even mad. I'm like, this is the best I've ever shot. Mm-hmm. Sucks to DQ. Yeah. You know, I shot uh, six and a half stages and shot them really well. I didn't get to finish it, but it's like, you know, okay, I can, I can at least hang my hat on that. So I stay with my squad the rest of the day, which for those people listening, that's an etiquette aspect. Yep. Don't don't be pissy, hop in your car and leave. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Stay with your squad. 
uh, be a good squad mate. You know, we all went out to dinner that night. Uh, and then, of course, you know, Josh Tarrant birthday. told him it was my birthday. <laughs> so I got a, a honey biscuit with a candle in it. So um, that that's kind of how February went into March. March yeah. was good. April uh, hadn't been very good. So we roll into the Gadsden match this time. Uh, kind of my opinion is uh, one of the best kept secrets yeah. as far as a shotgun match. Um, the freaking blast. You know, we, so, we were squatted with, what, seven, eight people in our squad? Yep. And uh, it, it's awful hard to look around and not see a smile. Like, okay, that's different. That's hard. I know. So you kind of breezed over it, but we can't talk about the gas and match yet. Yeah. We got to we got to we got to uh, settle on this uh, DQ thing a little bit here. Yeah. <laughs> so your first DQ. Yeah. And a particularly difficult one to take. I a think a particularly difficult one yeah. to take because you were smoking the match. What was that ride home like? Um. It was interesting. So uh, you, you've got uh, nine hours. Solo. Solo. Yeah, I, did, I, I rode alone. Um, I was staying with uh, with friends down in that area. And so we, we had a VRBO to, VRBO to go, a VRBO together. Um, and they're like, hey, are you going to stay? Are you going to go? I'm like, I'm not driving home tonight. I'm like, I'll stay. We had some pretty good conversations. Um, had, a, had a good conversation with a good friend about opportunities for three gun kind of in the future, some some different ideas, stuff that I, I can't really go to too much yet. Um, we, and, and it was it was kind of like, okay, that sucked. Mm-hmm. That part sucked, but there, there's a lot of good to come from it, you know, as far as I'm concerned. I, I'm competing in a squad with Jake Latola that I consider one of the top guys, especially if you take from the Midwest North, you know, the top guy in TAC Ops, if you will. Mm-hmm. And not just hanging with them, but competing with them really solid, you know, and beating them on some stages and, you know, we're pushing back and forth in really good camaraderie between us about, you know, everything was very uh, professional, if you will. And, and, you know, we're teammates on Vortex and all that stuff. And, and it's like, man, you know, it was going really good. Like, I can at least hang my hat on that. Mm-hmm. Um, talking with my wife on the way home and my kids were doing Taekwondo. So I got to hear some stuff about that and focus on something else. And then as I'm driving home, it's, it's nine hours. It settles in. It, it kind of settles in a little bit. And uh, I get a phone call from... From a friend that's at the match, kind of tell me how things are going, blah blah blah. You know, says sorry, it sucks. You know, and uh, you know, of course, it is what it is. But everybody wants to say, like, man, sorry to hear that happen. Mm-hmm. Um, and get a phone call from the, another friend that we we had a chance to talk about opportunities with other stuff, and, uh, and it kind of took my mind off of it. I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, so as I, I rotated into the week, I I actually didn't dry fire Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Um, Got got a chance. To, uh, Fred Ruiz out of Las Vegas was coming into town, going to do a class, and wanted to know if I wanted to go to the range yesterday. Yeah, let's go work on pistol. Like, I'm not taking my rifle out. I'm not taking my shotgun out. We're going to work on pistol. Mm-hmm. And we're going to work on spe- some specific things, and uh, and we got a chance to work on that. And it was like I didn't think about it once. Yeah. And so cool. the hard part that comes in, I think, is uh, my wife made a comment on my way back. She goes, "Well, did you learn anything from it?" <laughs> and I felt bad. I told her, no. No, I didn't learn anything. And she goes, well, what do you mean you didn't learn anything? I'm like, hey, this is the first time I've ever been continuing to win the match. I'm like, no, I've I've won like a shotgun match or shotgun stages. Um, me, James Gill, and Tim Yackley won a, a team match together. Mm-hmm. Um, I won a U.S. Amateur National Championship. And, and, and I've won some stuff, but not a three-gun major, like, mm-hmm. you know, 270 people. Right. Um, first time contending for that. And I'm like, you know, no, I didn't learn anything. Now, if I would had video of that DQ, I I could at least learn something from that. But I don't know how it happened. I don't know what went wrong to know what to fix. So So uh, are you going to be videotaping from here? um, I'd be lying if I said yes. Yeah, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna video. I mean, we just shot a match today. Yeah, yeah and I never brought my phone out once. <laughs> Not once. So if 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 somebody went through and you know we we, we shot a shotgun match today and I I literally took my phone out zero times. Right. And I and I had people ask me like, you want me to get video? I'm like, no, no, I want to. I'm, I'm I got two slugs and then we're here. And I'm gonna move to get two slugs and now I was focused on. Uh, you you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Shooting uh, clays with slugs at 25 yards. Yep. Um, not an easy task, and that that's where my mind was instead. That that phone and that camera isn't where it's at. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, of course, you know, once you're done with that, like, hey, give me the timer, I'll run some people. And 
uh, hey, maybe we'll help somebody with this, or hey, have you thought about this? Switch up and change this. And, and focusing on different things. Um, I should. I know I should. I've got buddies that shoot USPSA and 3-gun, and they videotape every stage. Yep. And their reasoning is is they, they're not doing it to post it. So we know we've seen every stage posted on there, and, mm-hmm. you know, people who didn't get to walk stages at the Vortex match, all they got to do is get on Facebook. Oh, yeah. I can go find stage five. I haven't seen stage five. Oh, that's stage five. All oh. right, I know what my plan's going to be. Yeah. You know, and so uh, you, you can see that, see a lot of it. But in my opinion, as far as social media goes, unless there's something pretty fantastic about it, it's white noise. It's like, oh, another stage video. Mm-hmm. And in, unless I see a name of a buddy that I really want to see something, eh. Now, if you have a portion of a stage, like uh, like if I had that portion of that DQ oh, and yeah. I posted it, a little more value to it. It might be painful to see every time, but it's going to pop up again and pop up again and pop up again. Mm-hmm. And the conversations that come from it of, you know, what what was wrong with the technique or what was wrong with this or maybe this is why you don't use this mag with it, whatever it may be. Um, yeah, but that's actually going to have a little more value in my opinion. Josh Terrence DQ is a great example. Right. You know, two guns on the ground. How did it happen? Okay, now he's got a new holster. Mm-hmm. Now he's got a new way of doing it with his rifle. And if you look, he'll post drills about dumping guns and transitioning. Well, hey, you know that's a great way to cut some time, but he's trying to do it in a way that um, he's not going to DQ like that again. You know, so it, like I said, if I had that video, um, which there's a possibility there may have been some GoPros or cameras on the stage, I'm hoping that there's something on there. Fingers mm-hmm. crossed, but. You know, it takes a while to go through all that footage, so we'll, yeah. we'll find out. If it does, yes, I will post it. <laughs> um, may have to edit a little bit of language. So we can learn something. From <clears throat> yeah, it, it'll be it'll be an uh, opportunity to learn something from the mistake I made. Mm-hmm. Uh, and for me, it'll be an opportunity to go, okay, this is where I screwed up. Right. To know what my mistake was to learn from. Right. So, yeah, the post-DQ is difficult. And, and I'll be honest, yeah. I got a $20 Dairy Queen gift card. I haven't used it yet. But you got three kids. I, I, the kids are probably going to get it because I'm lactose intolerant <laughs> yeah. and Dairy Queen. So so to to add the insult to injury, I not only DQ from the match, I get a gift card for a tummy ache. <laughs> so awesome. that, that's an exceptionally painful <laughs> one to swallow. So, uh, But I do have some like lactate at home that I could go and have some ice cream <laughs> with the kids. And I well, still have that picture to post when I go get it. So. Nice. Nice. Well, so we, we shot your first match after DQ today. Mm-hmm. There are no dump barrels. It's an all-shotgun match, so I didn't DQ doing yeah, that. Yeah, that was the weird part is, like, holding on to one gun the entire time. Yeah. Was So was there any sort of uh, jitters going in or anything, anything in the back of your head that you had to push away? Well, I'm a shotgun shooter, and, uh, and Fred, when he was in town and we were hanging out yesterday, we talked about regional aspect with three-gun. Out there, they shoot a ton of pistol. They shoot six to ten rounds of shotgun and then they get rid of it and they mm-hmm. pull their pistol and uh and or it's the all rifle. really close yeah and it's all close you it's know like they diffuser choke yeah there's there's no reason for them to put a light mod or a mod or an improved mod in the gun ever yeah so um Reds. and he goes he goes man out here he goes you guys really like shotgun i'm like oh hell yeah and he's like he goes man i, I just don't get a chance to practice shotgun a lot and i'm like well we, we should have you out here and we'll do a like a weekend training class mm-hmm. kind of a private deal we're we're going to trade so I'm, I'm going to try and talk him into it and see if he'll come out and work with me on pistol. And then I'll work with him on shotgun. Cool. And then if I can talk somebody to come in and work with both of us on rifle, <laughs> and then we can help them with something, uh, that, that'd be a good trade program, I think. But, um, yeah, no, I think with this match it was shotgun. So that's where I would say my strength lies. So it's a comfort zone, if you will. I'm not going to dump the gun and have it bounce out. That's mm-hmm. not a possibility. And so it's one gun. Most stages were one type of ammo. And so it should be yeah, really difficult to screw up. Nice. Yeah, there, there were some stages that were mixed or optional. Right. You know, we, we shot one that was optional, bird, buck, slug, depending upon what you're shooting. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, hey, put bird shot on, shoot bird shot. Put slugs on, shoot slugs. Put buck shot on, shoot buck shot. And so it, it, it's a comforting area after you DQ to go in and shoot something like that. So. Yeah, so... So the uh, match we shot today was the Ga- uh, excuse me the Gadsden Shotgun Championship. Kick in the pants, dude. Yeah, it it was not easy. <laughs> no, it was uh, 14 stages. I drove nearly that many hours to get here mm-hmm. to shoot the match, and totally worth it. Yeah, um, uh, be- definitely best kept secret. 
Yeah, did which, you ever shoot is, the uh, Pikes Peak t- Shotgun Challenge? I never got a chance to shoot that one. Yeah, so th- we did that like two years, and mm-hmm. that was great because, it, you know, it's like an hour and ten minutes away from uh, Denver. Um, I love an all-shotgun match. Mm-hmm. I love an all-shotgun match. And this this match that we shot today, you know, put on by Chad Francis, uh, looked like Brian Corey designed a couple of mm-hmm. stages. I heard Mark Roth contributed to some of them yeah, as well. Yeah, and Mark was told no. Because Mark wanted to make it harder and harder and harder <laughs> because he's skinny and gumby, and he can <laughs> fold into weird contortionist positions that right. the rest of us can't. Right. So, um, yeah, there, there were a few things where, you know, Chad came in and like, hey, no, you can't do that, man. People can't get down there yeah. to that to that port while sitting on a beam yep. and laying sideways and shooting the shotgun and loading it while laying on a four-inch beam right. through a low port. Like, what the hell's wrong with you? And right. So, thank like, goodness, oh, come on. Thank goodness. Chad was there for the uh, voice of reason. Yeah, yeah, which is kind of scary. So there was, yeah, I know, Chad being the voice of reason. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. So there were uh, several people here at the match that are going to be going to uh, France to shoot yeah. the uh, IPSC World Shoot. Mm-hmm. So this is one more of those prep matches type of things. Yeah. yeah However, so one of the things I liked about the way This one's Chad a little did, more outlaw. Right, so it's so. it's more outlaw. So one of the things I liked about the uh, the way that this match existed is that there were those challenges with buckshot. Yes, there were those challenges with slugs. There were those challenges with birdshot. Yeah, excuse me, that you would uh, consider IPSC styles. There were sure you no got no shoots stuff. with paper with buckshot, but there were also jungle run stages yes. like we would consider like outlaw three gun stages. Yeah. So there was, like, that healthy mix in there. Yeah. And when you throw in, like, 14 stages, there's those opportunities to shine in the IPSC style mm-hmm. as well as the LA style, yeah, which I thought was can, a fun mix. You can shoot both and do well at both, or you can crash at either one yeah. at any point in time. And, and we saw plenty of that. Um, yeah, there was, like, one stage that was, like, five and a half seconds long. Right? Yeah, I, I I think I shot it. the in, uh, star stage. Uh, shot it in 440. Yeah. And, and and most people around five to five to eight seconds, something right. like that. Um, right. And it, it was basically a, a gunfighter six plate star with an activator in the middle. Mm-hmm. Um, had a little bit of trouble getting it moving. Once we got it moving, it worked fine. We got everybody through. But yep. um, it was kind of a prototype that he was playing with. And then there were several other stages that were like you know thirty to forty second. Yeah, yeah. Jungle runny type thingies. Well, and it, yeah, if you shot it. There were a couple of stages that I shot in 29 or 30 seconds that it was a sprint to the end yep. for 30 seconds. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and it was sprinting while loading and then, you know, stopping as hard as you can and hammering those last six or eight plates. Yep. Um, th- the targets were placed, in my opinion, they were placed far, far enough uh-huh. that you could tell it wasn't an open shooter who put it together. Yeah. You know, 14 rounds in one spot. And you're like, oh, come on. You know, yeah, you know there wasn't four, a, six, ten. This wasn't. These jungle runs weren't like uh, stop, shoot an array, run in the next array. Yeah, you could shoot them shoot. moving. Yeah, yeah, and and it behooved you to shoot them moving. Yeah, certain ones did. Yeah, yeah there, there were certain ones that I shot moving, and there are other ones that I'm like, hey, there's enough shots here. I'm going to post and hammer, and then yep. run and load, post yep. and hammer. Uh, and, and I did both and tried to break down which one was more beneficial mm-hmm. for me on that stage. And there were times where, uh, you know, we, we shot with other guys in our squad, and you're like, man, you shot everything on the right side moving, and it went really well. But when you shot stuff on the left side trying to move, which for a right-handed shooter is usually backwards. You're talking about me, aren't you? No, no. <laughs> um, <laughs> your your uh, compatriot you drove down with. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so it, as, as he shot through one of them, it's like, man, you, you crushed the right side of that array, shot everything moving, and, like, didn't didn't miss a shot, and it was great. Like, that was awesome. For that left side, though, um, I mean, you kind of pooed the bed and rolled in it there, bud. <laughs> uh, you know, it, it was bad. Yeah. And you're like, you know, so what do you think about doing this instead? You know, shoot the stuff on the right moving and then come in and stop. Shoot the stuff on the left if that's what it's going to be for you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, find out what your strengths are, find out what your weaknesses are, and play to it when you have to. Work on your weaknesses later. Yep. And so, obviously, a match isn't a place to work on your weaknesses. No. So. The, the other cool thing about this uh you know, this match being, uh, you know, 14 stages, having all that variety is uh, there. Like you said, it's it's a best kept secret. So yes. not, not a whole yeah. lot of people know about it. So there there were no backups on stages because there yeah. was a healthy amount of empty stages in between all the shooters. Yeah. So we got through and we're like, we hardly even noticed, noticed the other shooters were there. Yeah. Yeah, we until, had free reign. Until we got to the final stage. <laughs> 
which was the uh, the UTV. Yes. And uh, Mark Roth was the designated driver. Mm-hmm. And he was pretty much hammered down as as much as you could handle. Yes. If you've ever been around Mark, you know that it's full throttle. Yep, yep. So. And uh, you know we got to hang out the uh, the passenger side of the UTV and and uh, take blasts at uh, birdshot targets as we were mm-hmm. going past, and then end on a uh, slug target. Yeah. And uh, that was a kick in the pants because we were all co-located in the same place. Yeah. So we it, got a it actually to went pretty fast though. Um, you know, oh we, yeah. We had everybody there. Now if if we were. If we were to see this match at 75 to 100 people and hit that number, we would have to kind of rethink where that happened and how we would do it mm-hmm. um, because we had, I mean, we were covering, what, 400 yards? Yeah, at least. I mean, and you're hauling. is yeah. you know, 16, 17 rounds of bird shot before you got the slug, and then you're going to make a In 60 to 80 yards. yard. And yeah, and you're going to make a 60 to 80 yard slug shot. Yep. Oh, by the way, the, the UTV hasn't quite stopped when you, go, you start pulling the trigger on it. Yep. Um, so I ended up, I think I sent three slugs at the slug gong before I hit it, and we're talking Iron Maiden. I only hit one. Yeah, well, you know that happens. <laughs> but we'll, we'll go. We'll go look at the times and see how that played out. Yeah, no. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, it. But it, it did. It went well. I mean, the, yeah. the match is a blast. It is a blast. And uh, it was one of those things. Like Chad's like, hey, I'm thinking about putting the match, and I'm like, I'm there. Yeah. And he goes. Know. He goes. Well, there there won't be a prize. I'm like, don't care. Yep. You, you know? know. And uh, it was a hundred bucks, fourteen stages. Like that's a pretty good. Yeah. Value. Oh yeah. So. Yeah. Um, I was chatting with uh, Chad at Texas Three Gun Championship, and uh, I think he he asked if I was going to Gen Three. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to make it this year. And one of my favorite matches, I'm not going to be able to make it, unfortunately. But um, he's like, "Well, come on down for the uh, shotgun match." Yeah. And uh, you know, after like figuring out what it was, I kind of talked to some local guys, and one of my uh, buddies was like, "Oh, I'll do it for, with you." Didn't even think. The weekend after. Vortex Shooter Source, mm-hmm. the weekend before NRA. Yes. So I'm gone. Let's see. I'm gone Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday for Vortex Shooter Source. Mm-hmm. Gone Friday, Saturday, Sunday for this match. And then gone Wednesday through Saturday yep. for NRA. is like, wow, that was a little too that, much to take that's on. That's a lot of driving. I know. So going into this, I was – you know, kind of kicking myself for scheduling so much in between, yeah. right? But the best but, way I can describe this one, though, um, let me finish th- that this real was, quick. This was a decompressed match, though. But having shot it, yeah, totally well, laid back, exactly. totally fun. It re- it reminded me of like shooting club matches with your pals. Yes, right, but only not the your, local pals. At the you know, only your pals are all from all over the nation. Yes, right? yes. It, it was very much like the uh, the shot show after match. Yeah, you know, so we had the majority of the Yackleys here. We had, yeah. you know, several people who come into town for it. You know, Mark Roth is down from RCI. Mm-hmm. Um, some people coming up from down south, and yep. a little bit east, a little bit west. And Beth Walker's here. Yep. A bunch yeah, of Beth Missouri Kimmel. people. Yep, and it, and uh, it was Simulers great. Simulers here. We, we went through, and, you know, afterwards, you know, everybody ate stir-fry that they made for yeah. you. Yeah. And which was that really, really, made? really good. Yeah. yeah Chad's <laughs> daughter's up there making stir-fry. I'm like, I know this kid. I've known her for a little while. I'm like... Uh, it should, it'll be okay. It'll be okay. It'll be sure, right. Surely, I mean, surely they're going to make sure like the chicken's done. There's like a parent standing near. Yeah, there's a parent I'm near sure it. It's okay. But they've got this huge griddle yeah. stir-fry machine. You're looking at it like, oh, my Pretty God. Pretty incredible. Yeah, this range that Chad's built is just absolutely insane. Yeah, and, and the thing is, is, so I came out here the first time early last year. Mm-hmm. And I'm going like, okay, that's kind of cool. And I come out, and I'm like, that worm wasn't there. Yeah, we added that. Well, how far is that? Well, we went from 500 to 600 yards. Well, Chad, that's a lot of dirt. Yeah, uh-huh. Okay. Then you go through, and he's like, yeah, we're adding another 1,000-yard range. I'm like, you already have one. Yeah, uh-huh. Going, okay. No, I, I, yeah, we re- bought, another redundancy. bought another 100 acres. Yeah, we bought another 100 acres. We're going to expand it more. And I'm going like, good Lord, man. Yeah. Like, if you're if you're throwing down, you're, you're throwing some money down to make sure that this happens. And, and it's impressive what he's been able to do with it. I mean, you know. Yeah, in a short amount of time. In, in a very short amount of time. You're talking about a year and a half. You know, he's been able to just – put this together and, and luckily he's got some family members that help with welding and construction mm-hmm. so there's a tower that we can shoot from on one uh there, there's a bunch of stuff here that we can do so we shoot three gun matches here you know every couple of months uh, i shoot a, a midwest point series and half the matches are here yeah that's part of that so oh. the uh the logan bills mm-hmm. at uh tooth and nail and then this one right yeah yeah they put a point series on every year and uh it's i think it's eight matches plus a championship and then I think you have your best six score. 
So if you've got if you shoot seven matches, your top six count for points. Oh, cool. And at the end of the year, they have a championship, which counts. I can't remember if it's the same amount of points or if it's like one and a half times the amount of points. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then the championship, as you pay all year long, you pay 50 bucks in. Then part of your match fee goes towards that at the end of the year. Uh, cash prizes for top X number of people. And then you go through and uh, Vortex, Armalite, and some other people provided prizes for random draw for people who participated. Sweet. So last year uh, I won the Point Series Championship and then managed to walk away with right at about 1800 bucks cash. Oh, cool. So it, it's kind of like, a oh, you know, not not only did you get to be the... Well, allegedly. Yeah, allegedly, the, the, yeah. The IRS yeah. doesn't know about it. Yeah. <laughs> well, it was, it was under certain... Well, maybe, I don't know. I, I put it on the tax form regardless, but then I found a ton of write-offs to <laughs> offset it. So, <laughs> no, we're, we're good on that point. Okay. So, yeah, and even driving down here, I bought 10 cases of double A's. I'm pretty sure that'll offset a big chunk of Oh, there of you it. go. Yeah. So. Yeah. Good times, man. So oh, the, yeah. Uh, all right, so we have, you know, first few matches of the year... Uh, we shot a fantastic match today. Um, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and say, like, if you're anywhere near Missouri for this match next year, yeah. the Gadsden Shotgun Championship, look it up, pay attention when it comes out. You better have a pretty good excuse for missing it. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. It, it, there aren't I mean, too many you can come up with. I mean, my buddy Chad and I drove 12 hours to mm-hmm. uh, to come shoot this one here. And uh, we had a fantastic time. We're up late tonight. We're gonna go back yep. and shoot a little bit tomorrow, and then we're gonna head home. But uh, but yeah, it was good. I, I would yeah. do it again. Definitely for yeah. sure. Like this is a good. Is it's good if you're within uh, you know ten twelve hours driving distance. Yeah. It's a good one. I don't know if um, I don't know if it's like a flying hotel kind of thing. Well, you you've got uh, in Missouri, you've got <clears throat> KCI in Kansas City, which is right near me. Oh yeah. Um, so you have KCI. You've got St. Louis. Yeah. So, think, so flying to KCI, region. Dylan will drive you down yeah. here. <laughs> yeah. So there's there's four seats in the Ford Escape. Uh, it's not a real big vehicle, but if I got a bigger one, well, I guess got, I could do it's that. It's got a cargo back. You know, we do well, that, trailer. That's where all the cases of shotgun shells go. <laughs> we can get you so, a trailer. Yeah, yeah. Put a trailer behind it. It's one of them U hauls. You can only go forty five miles an yeah. hour. <laughs> yeah. But no, it, it. I think it's it's definitely one of those things that's it's a more than worth it. Yeah, for sure. Um, it, I choose this match again. You know, one one good matches are interesting, um, but well, shotgun, what do we hear every year? Think about that. Every year it's like, man, we don't have enough shotgun matches. Uh, I miss so like I miss and then, and then I truly miss the Nordic shotgun championship. Yeah. I've and, heard that and from several the, people. The tri gun goes on and it's I think honestly there there's twofold as to why it won't happen. Um it, it's taxing on the guys who put it on. You got yeah. guys that are putting on a major match, and then you're asking them to put on another major match in a couple mm-hmm. of months because you got to keep in mind shooting season up there is small. Yep. So for them to put a major match on and draw all those people in for the tri gun, those are the people they drew it, they brought in for the shotgun match. Mm-hmm. So with them changing up and doing the tri gun, which I don't want them to stop doing that, there's a void left. Yep. You know we don't have the Rock Castle Shotgun Championship anymore. Mm-hmm. We don't have that one anymore. Like hey. Look, Hey, guess what? We got a got a venue for you. Come play. Well, and this one's like the uh, center of the country too. Yes. So let's that, all let's uh, say, come uh, and play. That has been an advantage for me, in my opinion. Uh, there's disadvantages to it, yeah. but that that has been an advantage for me when it comes to the matches that I can attend. Mm-hmm. Um, if you take you know, even you're you're in Colorado, you're eight nine hours west of where I am in Kansas City. Right. Um, for you to go to Kentucky, it's a long drive. Well, I it, always say that there's eight. that. Vast expanse of land called Kansas, Nebraska, Iowa, where yeah. there are no matches and it's no corn. one wants to shoot. There's a lot of corn. But people don't want to cross that to go shoot a no, match. No, you know? and, and Like you have your Western United States matches. Well, it's boring to drive, too. If you've, you've well, driven yeah. it, it, there's I drove nothing. It yesterday. <laughs> you know, it, and, and I, I live right on the border on the Missouri side, not the Kansas side. And and I, all my friends that live in Kansas love you guys, everything else, but your state is extremely boring to drive across. <laughs> um, I, I drove to Colorado a couple times to shoot matches. I shot the, the old Noveski yeah, uh, yeah. match that was out there at Byers, Colorado. Yep. And it was, my wife goes, well, why do you want to drive it at night? And I'm like, because it looks like the rest of the country at night. <laughs> and and she goes, like, really? I'm like, yeah, except it's really dark and there are no lights. Yeah. And she goes, well, what do you mean? It's I'm like, like I'll go down I-70, there is nothing. Yep. And I'm like, but at least at night. I can have like lights on the dash that entertain me, you know. And there's something better. And uh, and she kind of laughed and chuckled at me. But the drive home after the match was during the day. Yeah. And luckily, uh, my my grandmother's Poor passed bastard. away now. She rode back with me after staying with my aunt. Oh nice. And so it was like I at least had somebody to have a conversation with. Yeah. And we were talking about the match and how this went and how that went and stuff. And uh, you know, talked about what we were going to do when we get back and where we we're going to stop to eat and things like that. And that was better. 
Yeah. But the drive out there was just oh, it was awful. Yeah. Well, so. and, and and now you know Pikes Peak Shotgun Challenge isn't around anymore. Yep. So, so yeah, let's let's hope this one uh let's hope this one takes its place. I I agree. I I would like to see it expand. I, I would like to. Have, I, I'm a competitor first, so mm-hmm. I want to compete against people, and I want to compete against the best. Yep. So um, I win. I won this match by six percent overall, mm-hmm. uh, with uh, with an open shooter coming in right behind me. And then like second through eighth, or third second through eighth, eighth was seventy four percent, seventy five percent. Third through so. eighth was like within two percent of each other. Yeah, they were all stacked up pretty well. Yeah, uh, we but, were all stacked up. Pretty yeah. Well. <laughs> So yeah, there was a little separation, but I mean, yeah. it, you have a lot of guys that are pistol shooters. Are like, yeah, I want to come try this. Mm-hmm. We we had a uh, we had a shooter here today. Um, she shoots USPSA's, never shot three gun, never shot a shotgun match, and somebody gave her a shotgun and shotgun sales. She goes shoot it. Hmm. So she shot her first shotgun match, and it's like, hey, you know, great, awesome. You know, she probably had some frustrations, but she got through everything, did really well. Yeah. So you know, we we'll draw more people into it, build it up a little bit bigger. Yep. See some more people and then get to compete against the best. Yeah. So if you're listening, come out and shoot with us next year. It's going to be a good time. So, Dylan, what uh, what do you have coming up next? What are you looking forward to? And uh, what are you going to be thinking about going into your your uh, next major match? Well, uh, I'd like to go to NRA. Unfortunately, I will be the, one of the point series matches is stacked right on top of it. So I'm going to go to that. Um, with my major match schedule, That's it's one I have to hit because I, other places were compromised. Mm-hmm. Um I'm going to move to Babes of Bullets. I'm going to go shoot it. Uh, I was hoping to shoot open, but I'm going to I'm going to venture toward shooting tack off since I'm shooting well right now. I'm going to compete against the biggest field. So I'm going to go down there and compete in that match. Um, after Babes of Bullets is the match that I match director, which is the Shoot for the Gold charity match. We're going to have it, and that's Memorial Weekend, uh, in between daughter's birthday, some birthday party stuff there. Nice. Yep. Do you have spots open for that match? Uh, that one we may have one to two. Oh, okay. It, it is it is really close to sold out. So don't bother going inside. Um, no, no. If if there's a spot open, I would jump on it. Okay. Um, the the hardest working man in three gun, Brian Corey, is doing all the stages. Mm-hmm. And if if you've ever watched the old three gun nation pro series, the old three gun nation pro series, the uh, the stages that are complicated, you got to figure out and you know, do you shoot a pistol? Do you shoot a shotgun? Do you shoot this? Do you shoot that? Do you pick up your rifle? Do you, you know, bring whatever gun you want. Mm-hmm. Um, that's the mastermind building all the stages. And so I'm just the match director. I'm the uh, I'm the idiot with the radio who gets called, hopefully never. And I get to walk around, make sure everybody's happy. Um, then all the money goes to Special Olympics. Right. So, you know, hopefully everything will go well like it did last year. We'll raise a whole bunch of money. Everybody's going to be ecstatic that they got to shoot something that's not found around the country anymore and uh and it'll be a good time so got it but uh after that we're gonna roll into june nordic trigun uh i'm gonna go teach at the mgm junior camp oh cool um, imagine this it'll be shotgun <laughs> so uh that the bj norris contacted me and, and asked if i would come out and help uh so i, I told him i would I told him to focus on shotgun. We'll, we'll do everything we can to try and help him. Very cool. Um, going to do the Wyoming Governor's match. Got invited to go do the shoot off there and, and compete. Um, yeah, I have an opportunity to go shoot with Landy invited, Barnes out there. You got invited to do a shoot off? So there, there's an invitation for 12 to 15 pro shooters to have How a shoot off for entertainment. How do you define pro? Uh, that, that's always the hard part, yeah. Wait, I thought you were a professional chiropractor. Yeah, well, that too, yeah. <laughs> um so that that was kind of an interesting one. We we got invites. Um, do you want to shoot the match? You're invited to sign up early. Uh, there'll be a shoot off. If you, my understanding is, if you place in the top twelve, fifteen, whatever it is, then there will be people brought into it. And then it's my understanding is post match entertainment, if you will. I don't know huh. the ins and outs just yet. The cool part is though, um, talking to Lanny Barnes, <laughs> and uh, I'm gonna get a chance to go out and shoot with her a little bit. Uh, my dad, and my son are gonna come with me. I think we're gonna try cool. and coax a couple guys from Vortex into bringing their rifles out and go prairie dog hunting. Ah, yeah. And so spend an extra day or two to go do that before the match. So kind of make a multi-purpose deal out of it. Cool. So then I, I might I see there, I might not. Yeah. yeah. You're close. If nothing else, there's a drive through <laughs> I'm still so. waiting to hear if I'm in the match. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> I, think, I think there is a wait list on it, which, which is it, it's really encouraging to have the governor. I signed up the first day, so we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The the Wyoming governor putting on is kind of an interesting, interesting thing. Yeah. You know, I've got a Navy SEAL as a government or a, of a governor in uh, in Missouri, and I don't have that 
So apparently this yeah. guy's at least wanting to do something. Yeah, he's a cool, he's a cool dude. I've met him a few times. He's a really nice guy. Um, seems pretty legit as far as uh, you know his. Uh, um, seems to be walking the walk. Yeah. Right. More than more than talking. So that'll be a good thing. Yeah. Well, cool, man. Well. well, I'm uh, I'm gonna be seeing you at a couple of those uh, those matches possibly, and then. Uh, Interested to have you back and yeah. uh, see how how the mental game's going. Yeah, hopefully still good. <clears throat> yeah, so, without any more Dairy Queen cards. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, and that's what I'm talking about. Like, see, you know, we've we've had six years under, uninterrupted. Is it going to be six years uninterrupted? I would like to see at least another six years before it happened again. Exactly. Um, I I always considered that um, if you focus on the safety aspect and then worried about speed second, and you know, obviously accuracy needs to be one of the top things you need to think about but if, if safety is one of the things that you're not violating mm-hmm. you're not going to dq right um if if i push speed more than i did safety then that's what happened mm-hmm. if it was something that i my equipment that i did something wrong i, I spun it the wrong way i fixed it wrong I, I dumped it wrong whatever it may be that's what happened so hopefully there's a little video that comes out of it and yeah. you get to see it but um well let us know man yeah we'll uh oh it'll it'll be it'll be seen I'm sure. I, I I mean, yeah. I mean, who sees what? So it's educational value is the way I look at it. Yeah. So yeah, it it it's unfortunate, but uh, yeah, it's a learning experience. Hopefully. All right. Well, Dylan, good times, man. Thanks yeah. for uh, for sitting down with me and uh, and chatting about the uh, the day in the last couple months or uh, that have been happening for you in your your early start to the season. Wish you the uh, the best of luck in the next couple uh, couple of matches and. We'll uh, we'll hook up with you and and do a little check in. See what's oh, yeah, going definitely. on. Definitely looking forward to it. Hey, before you take off, be sure to check out the show notes for links to everything that we discussed at threegunshow.com slash episode one eighty seven. There you'll find links to uh, the previous episodes that Dylan was on that we talked about, uh, the Gadsden Shotgun Championship or Gadsden Shooting Range, and of course the uh, the Three Gun Shows YouTube channel. Uh, as well as the Jeff Kirkwald Memorial Match, which you heard the spot for in the middle of the show. This podcast is brought to you by Armalite, the original. Armalite rifles put the AR in AR-15. The rifles themselves come with 1 and 8 twist barrels, match barrels 18-inch or 13.5-inch with a 15-inch uh, or 12.5-inch handguard. Timney trigger, Luth AR stock, adjustable uh, gas system, tunable comp, a patented tunable comp, so things ready to go right out of the box for a three gun with no additional modifications other than putting on a nice optic. I myself use a Vortex Viper PST 1 to 6 when I'm shooting TAC Ops or their Spitfire when I'm shooting Limited. Check them out at Armalite.com. Quick reminder that if you enjoyed this episode of the podcast, subscribe in iTunes, Google Play, Podcast Addict, or wherever you get your podcast content so you will always get the very latest. Thank you so much for downloading, listening, and subscribing to the show. I'm Dave Hartman, and I'll see you on the range. If you are finished, unload show clear.